You gotta film it like this. You gotta turn it like this and like this. <laughs> this is our mess. Mistakes have been made. Well, things have been added. And That's now it's the problem. We did it right, and then we added a bunch of stuff, removed a few things, and added more things. And, and now we've got more things coming. So yeah. this is the rebuild because I am not satisfied with. I, yeah, okay, it doesn't look horrible, except for that one wire. But that's for the air rectangle. Um, but it's we need to put more stuff in here, and I'm not satisfied that, like, you know, you hear the stories going, hey, the mechanics, uh, cars always broke. No. Even this is too messy for me, so we're actually going to cut out all of this, pick all the servers out, clean this, and re-rack it, and uh, make it perfect again. It's almost good, but it's going to be great. Make it great again. That's it. <laughs> So Steve, on a scale of one to ten, how over this project are you? Uh, seven. Seven. All right. I'm over this part specifically. This floor is cold and hard, and I'm just kind of. So we got done finishing cleaning up some of the wiring, and that annoys me a lot when the wiring is not the way I want. Uh, I'm not someone who will just let it be, but over time we did add things, and then we have to schedule the time to take this all down on a weekend and clean it all up. But enough of that. Let's talk about what's in here first. Let's talk about this rack itself. Uh, besides being my stuff that runs my company, and of course also being the lab that I produce a lot of these YouTube videos on and storage for lots of other things and just many projects that we have going on here, um, the rack itself, in case you're wondering, is an old telecom rack from a company that went out of business. And uh, I mention that because this is not, it, it's standard in terms of width, it's not standard in terms of depth, which is also why we don't have regular slide out rails in it. Um, I always want to cover a couple of these things for the people who leave angry comments, but you should have put these rails or that thing. Yeah, they don't really fit in here. Um, and okay, I could go out and buy a bigger, deeper rack, but then um, the door that is right adjacent that I can't open or knock the camera over swings by, and there's a scratch right here of how close it comes to touching this. If we got a bigger, deeper rack, uh, things would not fit in here as well. And we've just had this for a while. So I just want to address those things because, well, someone has criticisms and I figured these are some of the reasons why I did it the way I did it. I do know how to do it the other way and we frequently do for clients, especially when the budget says, make this all really nice and pretty. Beautiful slide out rails are a wonderful thing. I don't have any though, Not it won't fit in this rack. So first we love to put stickers on here and uh, that's definitely just, I don't know, it looks boring without it. And of course, LEDs inside of here. So there's a lot of LEDs that we have all over it because I don't know, it makes the bits go faster, at least in theory. So here's the door problem I was talking about. The door just clears this. Now we can't open this, so we got to do this. And now we're in. We'll start right here at the top. So at the top, we have the Unify USG 16 10 gig switch with SFPs. So these are four SFPs for our four servers that creates the 10 gigabit storage network. Then we have one cable that connects from the Unified 24 port switch to the 10 gig that keeps the 10 gig so we can bridge over the network if we have other things we want to do in there. We also have up at top here uh, the Unify testing device that we've been testing for a little while. Well, we have the production one and we're getting ready to do a review. Part of it was installing this 10 gig switch that I did a review of so we can get the 10 gig Unify access point, the base station XG reviewed. So that review is coming next, but this is the rack review. Um, so that's connected in here at 10 gig. So we have one cable going up here for the 10 gig for that connection. Then we have this unmanaged switch in the middle. And if you've watched an old review of this, people complain, why do you have any unmanaged switches? This is my special, what I refer to as my dot two or security network. Um, my security network is separate physically from my other networks because it's where the virtual machines uh, and things attached that are specifically stuff we don't want connected to anything else except for exclusively based on ACLs and rules and things like that. Um, and that's all handled by PFSense. So this is a physically separate network. That's why there's an unmanaged switch. There's not really a need to put a managed one in there because um, I don't want to even, I don't even want to risk having it separate on VLANs. 
uh, look up VLAN hopping. I know there's mitigations for it, but just in case. Then, of course, the Unify 24 switch. Now, these black ones here are go around to computers in the office. These white ones go to the servers. So uh, we patch everything into the patch panel here, and this one red one, in case you're wondering, and maybe someone who obsessively goes, no, why aren't they all matching colors? That happens to go to the PF Sense. That's just how we label things. So I know the white ones are for servers, and they're all labeled. And then I know the red one goes to the PF Sense box. Once again, it's all punched down. Then these yellow ones, these ones go to the very front switch. So I'll show you that in a second. There's just a secondary, um, the IDF in the front of the building because, well, we have a shop area, we have a tech area, we still do retail computer repair. So there's all these computers that come in and well, I want them on separate networks. Well, they get VLAN. So they come out of here and the VLANs go to an eight port Unify up front and then to some more dumb switches because of the quantity of switches and we don't really need a bunch of them out there like that. So that's what these ones do. Um, pretty simple there. Next thing down, this is our KVM. So the KVM allows me just to switch real quick between any other, any other computer in here. And it's just a handy USB KVM. Actually, because they're all Linux machines, if you're wondering where the mouse is, that's they're all Linux machines. We don't use mice in the Linux world. Uh, but it allows me to quickly switch between any of the servers. We have room for uh, eight of them, but we've only got six hooked up right now. Then an Xbox below that is going to, that's the PF Sense. Yes, I know it's not a rack mount, but I had this really nice higher end uh, with a RAID array in it, HP Pro Liant, that was, um, well, it's a long story how it, we didn't pay for it. It came for free, uh, so I use it for the PF Sense. It works really great. It's got a really nice Xeon processor in there, and it's nice. It's way overkill. You don't need something this fast. It's fun because anything I throw at it, it boots up instantly and can process stuff like NTOP works really well or other advanced things we try with it. Uh, ignore this next server down. It doesn't exist. Uh, it belongs to a client. We manage it here. It's a separate thing that won't be listed here. So then we have our R710s. These are what run a lot of our stuff. Yes, I know they're older servers. They get the job done. And each of these has an SFP, 10, SFP plus 10 gig in there that goes back up to the switch. So 10 gig, 10 gig, 10 gig, 10 gig. Now, these are our two FreeNAS boxes, uh, Dozer Tank, and this is just a big JBOD and it's custom built consumer hardware. There's people that complain you can't build it on consumer hardware without an ECC. It'll fail. It's never failed, knock on wood. Um, but it, we really haven't any problems with it other than when you try to load it up, there are obviously are some performance limitations because it is an older i5 processor. This is not limitations because it's consumers hardware. It is limitation the fact that it's older piece of hardware. So uh, it does not have the IOPS performance we would like. That's also why we have this one here. This is still older, but a newer, much faster uh, system for those. And I'll, maybe I'll do some reviews specifically more detailing out the hardware on here if people are interested. Um, but this right here is our primary free NAS, and this is our secondary free NAS, so we have redundancy between them uh, for all the data. Because you can't just have data in one place, you need to have it multiple places. And once again, all of these have a tie to the storage network that allows for 10 gig access between them. That way when we're transferring VMs between Zen servers, we got 10 gigabit speed between them to pass around uh, VMs. If you're doing them live, it's great. Uh, it works really well. And then for storage, of course, it's just great to be able to say, hey, we've got these mounted across here via iSCSI and NFS. Um, this is where you've seen some of the testing I've done or things I've done in my lab. And once again, it's nice to have that 10 gig connection to be able to pull those through. Now, I just can't get back here far enough with my main camera so i'm using my phone here to show you here's all the sfp cables that are plugged in here is how we label everything in the back so the dot two network is all labeled with this and this is all cat six is the black cable and then our vlan and dot three network is all these cables and that repeats throughout the whole physical connection that way when we're plugging these in it's really obvious uh, which ones go where and which ones are on which network now one of the other things someone's going to point out is, yes, I know I have some power supplies unplugged. And the reason that these are dual power supply systems, but when we were rewiring it, uh, we didn't have the right connectors. And if you can, maybe my phone can pick this up. This rack has some unique connectors and we were a couple short. So uh, yes, that's a temporary solution of slide the power supply out so it doesn't beep. And uh, this allows us for, we still have the redundancy. It's just not plugged in right now. And uh, we will get the other power cords in. I just felt like doing the video today because I had time and we just finished all of this. 
And now to swing back, you can see why I had to take the door off. This is the hinge. The door swings out towards us, so we can't swing it back that way. And uh, let me walk backwards a little bit. <laughs> You can see how difficult and tight this gets in here. And away we go. Also, here's a look at all the stickers. All right. First, let me do this, this, and then of course all this gets physically locked. There's locks inside of this and latches to hold all this nice and tight and closed so people can't uh, come back here and fiddle with it. But honestly, once someone gets physical access, um, I don't care how good and how hard the steel is on this, it's definitely um they're gonna get through it uh, if they got time and or they'll just roll the whole thing out I, that's why all these drives and i will comment on this real quick everything has a password on boot all these free nas drives will not decrypt without the password that way anytime anything starts you have to have the password so if you were to somehow um, take all this with you somewhere else nothing would boot you do have to physically type passwords in these to get them it's inconvenient to reboot remotely i get it but on the other side is uh security because this is always the first question people like to ask, this is called uh, YWorks YED, yet another editor. Uh, it's what I'm doing to make all my network graphs. Been using it for a while, it's free. Uh, so if you wanna make network graphs with it, it's pretty cool and you can make them online, pretty neat. All right, now that we've covered that. This is the physical, you've seen the physical layer, let's talk about the software layer or uh, software defined networking layers that in, are involved in here. So. In the rack is all this yellow. This is a bigger view. We'll keep it zoomed in though. In the rack is all this yellow here. There's the PF box. There's the Comcastic craptastic internet that we have. There is, whoops, the 24 port Unify. So the 24 port Unify is carrying all the VLANs um, and the dot three network as we call it. So that plugs into the Zen Server 1, Zen Server 2, uh, Tank and Dozer, the two free NAS boxes. Then we have the security network. So if we want VMs to attach a security network, they attach to a physically different network interface, hence the reason you've seen two cables back there. So the, this one and this one connect to the 24 part on manage, managed by the PFSense. So it is a physical separated network controlled by the firewall rules within PFSense to allow or not allow devices to attach themselves or you know do any type of routing on that network. It's very finely controlled for security. Then we have the connection that goes to the 16 port 10 gig Unify. Now, this is the storage network. Now, the storage network is not at all defined as a network inside of PFSense because there's no routing. Not, and actually, we have more VLANs than even this. I'm just keeping it simple because uh, this is you can use VLANs without a gateway in them, not defined by your router um, in Unify or really any system. And what you do with those is that's how we build more pf sense or any other firewall that we're testing we can attach it to its own vlan and have its own routing and everything for when i do my lab work and storage is kind of the same way there's no routing within storage it's just a flat common network range and it has each server on that network statically assigned because they don't try to route through it there's no gateway for any of these servers but they can all talk to each other and of course by doing that they're all talking at a 10 gigabit link and this is what it looks like inside of Unify, in case you're wondering. So here's each of those, and there's the Xenifer tank, Xenifer 2, and the Dozer 1s. They're all white for showing that they are connected at 10 gig. Our ump link, because the 24 port switch does not have a 10 gig port, is only linked at gigabit. And this gigabit link here goes to the air rectangle, which we'll be doing a review, which is the uh, base station XG. So like I said, we've been doing some testing. It is new on next on review. A couple of people have messaged me. Hey, when's that review coming? Really soon. Maybe even tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> I got to catch up on a few things. So this helps define all of that. And then the other advantage you have here, because this is all, as I referred to, as software defined, I can easily go here to any of these ports and add one of the other VLANs and gain 10 gigabit connectivity to that specific device. So once again, some of the software defined networking features that work really well with Unify is I can on the fly just assign this and it will add that to that port. And then without physically changing network, we can have 10 gig access. Uh, for the most part, everything just accesses via gigabit because many of the devices we run inside of here, you know, like Invoice Ninja and things like that, all the different tools we uh, run, 10 gig wouldn't make them any better. They're all web enabled uh, software. Uh, for managing things on the, on the network, including this. This server runs and it's just running over the gigabit one. But of course, the backend storage to that for the Zen servers to be able to store and go back and forth 
goes across here. So, you know, my iSCSI and NFS shares, you want them on a separate, secure, private network. That's why we don't add anything directly to the 10 gigs. These are all connected to the SFPs. Now to look at the other side of it, that goes up to the eight port switch. And of course, some of these go to the office computers uh, for staff. Um, and then it goes to the studio area. We have two going into the studio area. This is actually how I can loop a firewall with a special VLAN into my studio just for when we do the testing. Um, then we have the Unify access points. We have different ones at different times because we test them here at our office. So I just put Unify APs, they connect directly into the 24 port. So this is the tech area where all the computer repairs are done. There's lots of client, these are all client uh, systems here. And there's those two 24 port dumb switches fed by Unify. The, I'm not gonna get a close up because yes, the wiring's messy. Uh, it needs to be redone because they're started rewiring some stuff and they didn't finish it yet. Uh, that'll get done later. And then this eight port is what's feeding these two unmanaged switches that I talked about for the tech area that I was in. So this is kind of like just the feed for all of that. So that's kind of the whole network layout. It's not too complex. Um, it's pretty simple and it allows us to easily redefine things kind of as needed so we can grab any one port, redefine it to fit a need, especially in the studio area. That's how I do all my testing in labs. And of course, like I said, these are XCPNG, XCPNG, and FreeNAS, FreeNAS, which allows me a lot of flexibility and a lot of VM storage uh, space on these. I'll do some separate videos, maybe getting into the details of the FreeNAS boxes, um, if there's an interest in there. And some of the other stuff. But this is kind of the overview of how our network is set up and how it's laid out. Uh, so hopefully that's interesting or comments, or if you want to further follow what video on some of the servers we use, let me know. All right. Thanks.